Hi, this is Rick Shear with VMware Tips, and this is our VMware vSphere 5 video series. Part 2, installing VMware vCenter 5.0 in around 5 minutes. Alright, so picking up where we left off in Part 1, we're going to log back into our ESXi host using our root account. And we're going to configure a couple last settings. So the first thing we're going to configure is NTP. It's really important that time is consistent across all of our hosts and vCenter servers, so we're going to attach this ESXi host to an NTP server. And I did notice that the time is a little off, so being a little impatient, I'm going to change the time, as well as choose to start the NTP daemon service with the host at boot. So there you go, NTP is configured, and the next thing and final thing we're going to configure is Active Directory. So joining this individual ESXi host to the Active Directory domain, providing the domain name along with a login and password, what this is going to allow us to do is actually tie Active Directory users and groups as administrators of this host. So what I'm doing now is actually going to add a Active Directory group by the name of VM Admins to this host as administrators. So what this is going to allow us to do and why it's beneficial is we're going to be able to manage individual hosts using Active Directory accounts. So manage permissions at a group basis with a consistent login that's used across multiple systems as well as allow us to audit uh, this ESXi host a little bit more directly. So there you go. We have the VM admins group now as part of the administrator's role on this ESXi host. And what I'm going to do now is actually log back into vSphere client using my Active Directory credentials. So now any task that I perform within this host will be tagged under my Active Directory username. So now we're going to deploy our OVF template for vCenter server. I'm going to be using the vCenter server virtual appliance downloaded from vmware.com. This is a SUSE Linux based appliance with the vCenter server binaries pre-installed. We'll choose a name for this virtual machine as well as a destination. I'm going to choose thin provisioning for the disk type as well as power on this VM after deployment. And there you go, our OVF is being deployed quickly and easily. Through the magic of video editing, I'm speeding up the process here so we don't have to wait. This is, uh, as you know, a five minute video. So process is complete. vCenter server is now installed. And what I'm going to do now is the final configuration portion within the console and uh, it's basically just assigning a IP address to this vCenter server. So in the console, choosing configure networking, I'm going to assign a static IP address for this vCenter server. IP address, netmask, gateway, DNS servers, as well as hostname. And then from this point forward, all of our configuration will be done either through a web browser or through the vSphere client. So network is restarted and now we can actually close this window and open our web browser to the IP address on port 5480 running HTTPS. The default login and password is root and VMware and the first thing we see is that we have to accept the end user license agreement. From here, let's drive into each portion. The status tab shows that the service is not running because database is not configured. So I'm going to choose the embedded database. With the vCenter virtual appliance, we can only choose embedded or Oracle. Unfortunately, no SQL support yet. Uh, if you're planning on using the vCenter virtual appliance in production, I would highly recommend an external Oracle database. Embedded is great for smaller infrastructures and for lab environments. 
but if this is going to be a large scale production environment, I recommend ex uh, using an external SQL, uh, Oracle database. We could change some settings around uh, the size of the inventory. We can also change our local administrator password. This is the root account. We can also point our logs and core files to an external NFS share if we want. On the services tab, we can see that syslog and auto deploy are also parts of vCenter virtual appliance. This is great because we can point syslog, uh, our syslogs on our ESXi hosts to the vCenter server, as well as uh, use auto deploy natively from vCenter uh, virtual appliance. On the authentication tab, I'm going to configure Active Directory to join this system to our domain. This will allow me to use Active Directory groups to allow administrative privileges to the vCenter server. We can verify our network settings as well as our system settings. We could also see update settings, including appliance versions, as well as enable uh, updates from this web browser. So really the only thing you need to configure is that database. Once that's configured, you can go back to the status tab and start vCenter. This is gonna start up the vCenter uh, processes. It's going to make a connection to that database. And within a few moments, everything's up and running. So what I'm gonna do right now is close all these windows out, close everything down, and then open my vSphere client again, but now pointing to the vCenter server. So inputting the IP address or DNS name for that vCenter server, the default password of VMware on the root user, ignoring the security warning. And there you have it, vCenter server up and running. The only thing we need to do now is create our data center, Irvine RDC. I'm also going to create a cluster. This is an HADRS cluster by giving it a name choosing the cluster features, so turning on HANDRS. I'm going to choose the default settings for every uh, other window. I'm going to hit finish at the very end. Our cluster is now created and now I can add my first ESXi host by choosing the either DNS name or IP address along with credentials that have authorization to that ESXi host. A permanent username is recommended. I would not recommend an Active Directory user unless you create an Active Directory user that will always be there. That host will be added to the cluster. The HA client will be pushed and installed to that host as well. And HA will be configured. Obviously there's no other hosts so HA states running as master and there you have it everything is up and running the only other thing I wanted to do is actually assign a Active Directory group to the top level hierarchy so my VM admins group I'm gonna assign full administrative rights to the entire vCenter server and now I can actually close vSphere Client, reopen, connect as my Active Directory user, and we are going to be ready to go. So vCenter Server 5.0 installed, configured, ESXi host added, Active Directory configured, our Active Directory group there, and we're good. So what did we cover? We finished the configuration of our ESXi host by configuring NTP as well as Active Directory. After that, we assigned an Active Directory group administrative access to that host. We then deployed the vCenter virtual appliance from an OVF template we downloaded from VMware.com. After the OVF template was deployed, the last portion in the console would be configuring the networking. After that, we can open our web browser and finish the configuration where we chose the embedded database as well as configuring the Active Directory connection for the vCenter virtual appliance. We then started the vCenter services, closed all of our windows down, opened our vSphere client again, pointed to the vCenter server. We then created a data center and cluster with HA and DRS, 
added our ESXi host to that cluster, and then finally uh, closed it up by assigning an Active Directory group rights. With that, I thank you for joining me. This is Rick Shear with VMware Tips, and we'll see you next time.